Welcome to the Good News Express International, an inspirational program designed to explore how the good news of the gospel changed ordinary lives into extraordinary believers. Join prophetic teacher Bonnie Jones as she gathers testimonies of believers from around the globe, from the unknown to the well-known, from the hidden to the forefront, and everywhere in between, express the impact of the good news of Jesus. And now, here is your host, Bonnie Jones. Welcome to the Good News Express, where everyone's testimony is important. You know, God has done a great and mighty work in all of our lives, and it's time that we begin sharing with one another his testimony. It is his testimony, what he has done through us. We want to hear from you. Now, today we are joined by a wonderful, spirit-filled, awesome prophetess of God, Kathy Walters. She is one dynamite lady. I'll tell you, if you've ever been around Kathy, you are going to experience the glory of God and the joy of the Lord. She is just full of the Holy Spirit. So, Kathy, welcome to the Good News Express. Thank you. I just love being here. Oh, well, we love having you. It's way too long since, <laughs> since we've seen you. Um, you know, Kathy, I have a few questions I want to ask you. I, I know we're going to have to do probably two or three shows to get all of your testimony <laughs> in. You know, it's like like the the Bible can't contain all the works of Jesus. We just can't contain all that you've done in your lifetime. Yeah. But, but well, I do have some unusual stories. <laughs> oh, I know. You and Bob had lots of them. But let's start. I know that you were born in the UK. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I was born in, yeah, I was born in the south of London. Okay. And uh, it's all kind of very proper and everything. Uh-huh. Excuse my voice. I'm a bit, um, but anyway, so yes, we were very proper and my mother was very proper. She never called me Kathy ever. She called me Catherine. <laughs> and, um, so I was going on my merry way, and then uh, I met David. <laughs> oh goodness! Well, let me ask you this: When did you come to the states? Um, 1977. Okay. When faith, faith was. I had faith. She was two weeks old. Oh my goodness! You traveled with an infant to the states? <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, at least you didn't have to take a boat, right? No. <laughs> okay. Well, Kathy, I want to ask you this awesome question, and I just want you to kind of take it away. Um, at what age did you come to know the Lord? How did that happen? Were you, you know, okay. downtown London, or were you in the States, or just? No, I was, I was in London, and, um, you know, I was having a good time. I was having a good life dating and stuff. And uh, anyway, one day I was at a, <clears throat> excuse me, a dance and I met David, who's now my husband. Yeah. But anyway, it was kind of strange. I thought he was a little odd, but anyway, he, he asked me for a date and, um, and he said he'd take me out on Sunday afternoon. I thought that was a bit odd, you know, <laughs> anyway. So, uh, he, I went out on this date with David, and he said, I'm sorry I couldn't come earlier, but I went to church, and I would have invited you, but I don't think you'd understand it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, um, and I would invite you tonight, but I don't think you'll like it. And I'm like, who does he think he is? You know, so he doesn't even know me. Uh-huh. <laughs> So um, I wanted to go because I was going to prove that I understood it. <laughs> right. And I actually did go to church. And I had an argument at a party the night before with this guy who kept talking about God. And I thought he was crazy, you know. So anyway, I went off to church with David. I didn't understand anything because <laughs> the, the pastor there was our pastor for 10 years, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Uh, was awesome, but he is very intellectual and lost me on the first sentence. 
So I didn't understand anything, but, you know, I didn't want to let on that I didn't understand. So um, I went to supper with some friends and uh, they just explained the gospel to me. And um, I kind of, huh, well, mm, okay, well, I know that. We all know that Jesus died on the cross. Well, right. That's, that's nice, you know. Yeah. So anyway, um, so, you know, he took me back home and it was kind of funny because I was coming, I remember combing my hair in a mirror and suddenly this voice said to me, it's true. Mm. And I know, I knew exactly what that was, that Jesus dying on the cross was true and it was somehow very pertinent. So then, you know, it's like, you know, when you get, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the pieces of a pig jigsaw, and they suddenly all come together. And I suddenly understood the gospel. Wow. And like, that was for me. And I got saved right then, as much as, much as I knew how. So and, this was uh, at your house then, right? At home? Yeah, it was at my yeah. house. Hmm. So um, that we were well taught. I mean, we were trained. They did the discipleship thing and everything. And we were at Westminster Chapel for 10 years. Wow. Um, and it was wonderful theology. But it was only theology to me. Right. Um, it didn't help me in the sense that I knew what I should do, but I couldn't do it because I actually needed a lot of deliverance. Mm -hmm. but, it, but in those circles, no one knew anything about deliverance. Right, yeah. So I struggled away. I struggled away for about 10 years. And um, my mother, and I have to tell you this because my mother was absolutely horrified. Yes, and she was so upset because she thought we were Christians because we lived in England. You know, yeah. of course we're Christians. So, and when David gave me a Bible, he bought me a Bible. She was so upset. She was so offended. Huh. She said, who does he think we are? We're not in prison or something. We're not murderers. Yeah. <laughs> she was just so huh. upset that he so that was thought we needed a Bible. So it was kind of like a mindset, uh, kind of a mindset if you were born in England that you just had to be Christian, right? Oh, you were a Christian, yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm just so upset by this Bible because that, she said that's for sinners. <laughs> yeah, it's for sinners. So, and you should not understand. So um, I struggled away for a long time trying to live this Christian life. And we didn't know anything about being filled with the Holy Spirit or anything. Yeah. I never heard of anything like that. I remember this one guy used to come to church and um, he was smiling. He was always smiling. And they said he was like a Pentecostal. Oh my gosh, you know, a Pentecostal. Like, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> Everybody had to stay away from him. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, he was smiling all the time. We we're like, oh, he's done something bad. Yeah. Anyway, so after, <laughs> after about 10 years of this struggling away, I thought, I just can't do this anymore. I had more fun when I wasn't a Christian, you know. <laughs> so yeah. um, I had a friend who felt similar. So we actually ran away to Australia. <laughs> well, that sounds like fun. Because <laughs> we thought maybe God won't find us in America, in Australia, and <laughs> they don't know us. <laughs> so we can live our life you know so we did actually do that yeah. I was engaged to David at one point but we broke it off and um because he thought he was much too young to get married anyway <laughs> <laughs> I went off to Australia and I backslid really bad <laughs> um although it was really funny because when the boat docked in Australia guess who met us come to meet us with some Christians <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we ditched them as fast as we could. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and actually, I was having a really, I was having a good time in a worldly sense. Uh -huh. You know, people think that if you're not saved, you're kind of miserable and in the gutter. Well, we were, we were having a good time in that <laughs> sense. We were. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. So I ended up, I ended up engaged to someone in the mafia. Wow. And, uh, the Australian yeah. Mafia? Yeah, well, it was uh, Lebanese. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And um, it was kind of like 
I'm sure a lot of people experience this. It's like you're in a bubble mm. and you don't really know what's going on around. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's like unreality. Yeah. Anyway, I was having a good time in this unreal world and because he was very good to me. And But I was watched all the time. Um, I got a job because I was bored <laughs> and I worked sometimes at exhibitions because I did actually like people. Uh -huh. But he knew, when I came home, he knew who I'd spoken to, where I'd been, how I got there, if I got a cab, if I got a bus, he knew everything. I was watching all the time, but it didn't, it didn't sink in that that was like kind of serious. Yeah. You know, and um, maybe you felt a bit protected though, you know, knowing somebody's always watching you. Yeah. You know, maybe. God, maybe you want to say that again. You. Say that well, I said maybe, you know, because the mafia guy always had somebody watching you. I said maybe in a way you felt protected. Knowing yeah. That maybe. He's always watching you. But yeah. God, he's always that. watching you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so one day I was, um, this was like a couple of years later. Now, <clears throat> people think you can't be a Christian but actually I was still a Christian because you always have this God consciousness that doesn't mm. go away right you just push it away yeah and so I went into um have a cup of tea in the tea room I was at this exhibition and um I had my tea in my hand my cup and saucer <laughs> and suddenly I heard these angels singing it, it it sounded like they filled the room and they were singing that old hymn, Oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go. Uh -huh. And God just spoke to me and he said, Kathy, I'll never let you go. Wow. And then the love of God came on me and I just started bawling like a baby. I was just sobbing and bawling, you know. And it was weird because nobody asked me what was wrong. <laughs> I mean, if I, you know, if a lady next to you started crying, you'd say, something wrong honey or yeah. something nobody said anything not a word they called a cab and put me in the cab and sent me home so I was back to my apartment and it's like I know that it was the anointing but I didn't know what yeah. the anointing was then um so <laughs> this anointing killed me um and I had a vision of Jesus on a white horse but of course I didn't believe in visions we, we were told that's all the devil yeah, you know, right. <laughs> if anybody got healed, that's the devil. We <laughs> talked about a vision or a prophecy, that's the devil. We, we were kind of taught like that. So I had this vision which didn't go away, but, I'm, but, I, but I didn't believe in visions, but it was there. <laughs> but it was right there. And so um, after that, I guess it was this anointing on me. Everyone I spoke to got saved. <laughs> I, mean, I could have said anything. Honestly, I could have said, Bar Bar Black Sheep, they still would have got saved. Because, <laughs> because people would actually follow me and they would say, what is that? What is that? What is that? Wow. So people were getting saved and then all over. And then I thought, you know, this, my fiance guy was going nuts, going crackers. <laughs> and she didn't know what to do because I wasn't hurting anybody. Uh -huh. um, so anyway, all these people got saved and I suddenly thought, oh, God, you know, what am I going to do? Because you don't just say, I don't think I'll do this anymore. It doesn't work that mm -hmm. way. So I thought, yeah. oh, God, help me. What am I going to do? You have to get me out of this. Mm -hmm. And um, the next day, he, the guy, Michael, his name was, he rushed into my apartment. And he was very upset about something. And he said, I'll deal with you later. Mm -hmm. And he went into the kitchen and got a gun out of the drawer. Oh, dear. So I thought... Well, at least I had a vision. <laughs> <laughs> he rushed past me and um, I never saw him again or ever heard from him ever again. It was really strange. Well, that was the blessing. Something was happening. Yeah. And um, so I thought, well, I better get going while the going's good. <laughs> and then I thought, I wonder if David's still available. <laughs> Yeah, because he liked church, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I wrote to David, and he decided, you know, 
he wants to get married now because now he's 34 and he's old enough to get married. <laughs> so um, <laughs> me and another friend, we uh, came home on a ship we had, because I wanted time to think, you know, and it was a six week um, journey. And um, wow. so when I, came, when I came back to London, I was like, so different from all my old friends because I had that experience, mm -hmm. you know, and they like thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Kathy? Kathy who? <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it was at the beginning of the move of the spirit back then, you know, when God was touching people. So this would have been about what, you, about what year, Kathy? Sorry? About what year was... Oh, it was, let me just think. That would have been about 1970, 69, 70. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, and God yeah. was, um, he was drawing people, touching people. Yeah. You know, and our group, the group I was a part of, which was an uh, evangelical group, a witnessing group, um, some of them were hungry too, but we didn't know what for, of course. We didn't know. <laughs> I mean, I still didn't understand what happened to me. I still never heard of the anointing. I didn't know anything what that was. Yeah. Um, just that I had that experience. So people were getting hungry and kind of praying. We didn't know what we were praying for. <laughs> we didn't know what to ask for. We didn't know anything. We just, I mean, this is where we were at, honestly. Yeah. We had a prayer meeting, my friend's house, they were actors. And we would stop the prayer, start the prayer meeting in time to stop the prayer meeting. <laughs> and trying to have a glass of whiskey and a cigarette and watch the horror movie. <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> I know we had it all timed out, but we, you know, it's really wrong with that. But guess what? Mm -hmm. God showed up. <laughs> God showed up, just like smash. Yeah. And uh, he sent some guy to us who just spoke. And things just happened. I mean, we didn't know what was happening. We got filled with the Holy Spirit. We were speaking in tongues, falling over, getting drunk, and we didn't know anything. We didn't even know any worship songs or anything. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> God like, just invaded your space, though, didn't he? Yeah, he took yeah. over everything because, but he took over because we didn't know how to do anything. That's See, right. we'd never been to we'd never been to a meeting. Yeah. We didn't know that you sang some songs and then somebody, we didn't know anything. So we just did whatever. And uh -huh. um, people started coming to our house from all over. We didn't know them. They just heard something's happening. And so they came and we would just sit and, uh, you know, people had visions and prophecies and this and that. We still didn't know anything. Someone taught us a few songs to sing. <laughs> yeah. So we, we sing the songs and, um, you know, and people would have a vision. We didn't know you were supposed to get an interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but you know what I was thinking in that, though? I mean, you didn't have any um, format, you know, mm -hmm. but God invaded that space because he knew yeah. you guys were hungry and thirsty for him. What's that yeah. sound? Just give me Jesus. I mean, that that's what, that's where it's at. That's... Not that you have to, it's nice to have the songs and everything, but I think you yeah. just told you, you don't need it. You know, I mean, you need him. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I was talking to someone the other day and I, you know, I said, when, um, who was, who was the man at the beautiful gate? Was it, was Paul and Silas? Who was it at the beautiful, the, uh, oh. he was the man? Yeah. What, Peter, was it Peter and John? Yeah. <laughs> somebody I, I my mind's gone blank I'm sorry anyway but they didn't say um oh, can you just hang on we're just going to get our worship team yeah all right <laughs> pray for you yeah it was just you know the man asked for arms and they said well we can give you legs <laughs> yeah that's right yeah and yeah. and this is another thing that's really good for the religious people it says they pulled him up mm-hmm well, I've been in meetings where people say, oh, he pushed me. Well, sometimes perhaps you need to be pushed. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. see, he could have said, 
oh, he pulled me, so I hope that's not God. <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so um, all this was happening, and then there were so many people. It was spreading along a lot of houses. Different houses had groups, and so we moved finally into, like, the town hall kind of thing in the middle of the market square. But what was in the house was just transferred into there. We still didn't have... Uh, we had... God raised up some men, you know, that had a little bit of experience and knowledge, mm -hmm. and they kind of oversaw, but nobody really took charge of it. It was just um, the Holy Spirit just took over. Yeah. So people, there were prophecies and visions and words and healings and all kinds of things, but it wasn't in any kind of order. Yeah. Somebody yeah. would have a word, they'd stand up in the middle. The musicians actually sat with the people. But don't you think that was perhaps better than so organized, well, you know? I mean, yeah. his Holy Spirit had his way instead of yeah. us trying to fit him into what we want. Yeah. Yeah. You see, because yeah. God gave songs to other people, not just the musicians. So God gave someone a song, they'd sing it, and the musicians would put it in the right key. Right, yeah. And sometimes they had a song, but sometimes the little old lady... The back yeah. had a song. Yeah, so it was this, awesome. Uh, I remember um, one Sunday, this little boy got up. His name was Stephen. He was only eight years old. And he put his Bible on the floor and stood on it. <laughs> he, he read something about standing on the word. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> he just stood on the Bible. Oh. And he sang two lines from an old song. Um, about the goodness of God or something. And he sang a couple of lines. Yeah. And all of a sudden this wind like rushed into the building and knocked 250 people off their seats. <laughs> that was the end of that meeting, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's precious. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's kind of like that and it spread. I mean, the police called us and said, will you stop sending people over here? Cause we don't care what they stole 20 years ago. Oh. So people going to the confessing things, you know. We said yeah. we're not sending anybody, and um, <laughs> they and some other sides to go into the schools, and the power of God just fell on the schools. I mean, sometimes they had to close the school. They had to close down the school. Even Leicester College, which is quite an intellectual college, they had to close it for two days That's because amazing. the kids were la they were laid out. In the playing fields, in the corridors, <laughs> and um, we we need that now, don't we, Kathy? Yeah, I mean, in the states, I don't know about the UK, but for sure here we need it. Yeah, I think a big key of that move was that we really didn't know how to, we'd never seen a meeting. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, we did afterwards, but um, it was kind of similar to what we came into. Yeah. It was a church in Somerset that had the same river. And he, you never knew what was going to happen because it, if you, it's like an orchestra conductor with an orchestra and Holy Spirit touched different people. And yeah. it came into this beautiful song yeah. at the end. But it was all, it was like one message going through the whole. Uh, I think that's beautiful. It was just, yeah, it's just very awesome. And um, so that kind of multiplied and we didn't encourage lots of people to come from one area. If there was 10 or more, we'd say stay in your area, uh -huh, you know, yeah. have your own meetings. So it spread like that way rather than that way. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's real. but I know that there's people that I know that were in that move uh, today. They have a very, very, very keen discernment because we, you know, we had to listen to God it wasn't the kind of meeting where you shared, oh, well, pray for my aunt Lucy because she's got a headache. You right. had to hear what the Holy Spirit was saying. Right. You know, and, and bring that. And uh, so they were very well, in tune. That, that's been lost along the way. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's become so organized. Yeah. Instead of just letting the Holy Spirit have his way. Yeah. Yeah, but I think people are afraid. Um, you know, I've talked to a, you know, I've traveled all around the world, and I've talked to lots and lots of 
uh, leaders who told me when they see something they've never seen before, they, they get afraid, they get scared. Yeah. So they shut it down without waiting to see mm -hmm. God, you know, yeah. just because you've never seen, seen it before doesn't mean it's not God. That's right. Yeah, to, that's true. That's true. You have to wait. Um, so it's pretty awesome. And um, yeah, all those people now, they really can hear from God. In fact, uh, when you came in, we didn't actually have a front, actually. It was like, you know, this uh, kind of like a square kind of thing. And it really didn't matter where you sat because, you know, I, you could come and sit in the, the third row on this side and the lady next to you would tell you your name and address, you know, and the name of your dog and everything. And people would run out. They'd run away because yeah. they'd come creeping back again. But it was, so it was a really everybody. It was an everybody revival. And um, God used little people, big people. He used the butcher, the baker, the banker. <laughs> in the most tremendous way. I mean, really... Yeah, fantastic. He did very unusual things, which, like I said, if you if you've never seen that before, but you you, you have to learn to listen to the witness in your spirit, mm -hmm. because otherwise you're only going by what you know. Right. Um, I remember in one meeting where um, there was a boy he got saved that day, twelve years old, and the teenagers were all around singing, worshiping, and this little boy fell on his knees. The anointing came on, he put his um, hand and his arm out with his finger pointing like this. Uh -huh. And it went around this room. And every time his finger got opposite someone, they hit the, oh, sorry, they hit the floor. You see, it started getting delivered. Yeah. It started getting delivered. Afterwards, he didn't know anything about it. It was like in a trance. Uh, yeah. And then um, it was like this light came. It was just beautiful people just delivered and worshipping. Then it moved over into this guest house, wow. which was near the meeting place. And it came like a train. I don't know if you ever heard one of those loud trains that come. Yeah. People were trying to put down their tea and coffee and everything. It just blam, fell on them. They started getting delivered. <laughs> and the children upstairs, upstairs, they were in bed in that guest house. They came running down because the Spirit of God woke them all up. Yeah. And they were telling their parents, I stole this money out of your purse. Oh. And it was just... <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, the Spirit of just... Truth showed up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we had lots of things like that because we didn't know any better. <laughs> wow. So we just you thought... Because just... could... you experienced that, you know. I, I, yeah. I haven't. Uh, and I suppose most people have it, but could you, I think it'd just be powerful if you could pray for that same anointing to fall upon the body of Christ. unbelievers, just people everywhere, because, you know, we, we need the Holy Spirit. Yes. To quit putting him in a box and putting him in our time slot, you know our time slot there's no room for him to move because we're trying to organize it's, it's almost like organized crime it's what i was thinking it's like we're yeah. trying to organize him and fit him into our our time slot and he's well, can I just, in time but would you pray can I, tell you, can I tell you a little story sure because this i think this is where the problem is isn't the people are so hungry and like my friends my people on my mail list they have visions, dreams, words, I mean, everything. But they, they go somewhere and sit there. Right. You know, to, I'm not, you know, I don't want to be condemning or anything, but they just sit there every Sunday. And um, they probably say when they get home, well, that's a shame because when, when you come together, everyone can bring something. But anyway, this one, um, Arthur Burt, you remember him? Oh, yeah. Oh, He's an yeah. old man of God. Yeah. He was in the ministry for 90 years. That's nine zero. Yeah. And he came to a church that I was at at the time, and he told a story, and this was the story. He said he was in a move years ago in the north of England, 
And in the meeting, the Holy Spirit kept falling on the children. Mm -hmm. Children would fall out of the chairs and flap around on the floor. Mm -hmm. And so it would disturb the meeting, you see. So the, the guide charge said, hold on to the children. Don't let them fall on the floor. So the next they held on. But when the Holy Spirit came, the children just fell on the floor. And that, so they ended up putting the children in the basement so that they could have their meeting. Huh. See? And they'd huh. get the children out. And they were gone. They're like in heaven. And like, they have to carry them out. And the huh. walls would be dripping with like oil stuff. And um, so he told this story, Arthur Burke. And the very next week in that same church, the Holy Spirit fell on the children. And they all fell on the floor, all of them. Mm -hmm. And guess what happened? He had them all carried out and put on the grass next to the church. Huh. So the children were out there seeing angels and everything so that we could have our meeting. Yeah. You see, so it's like, a, yeah, that you have to pray for a vision to come uh, where people allow. They allow, you don't have to stamp everything out. Um, you know, you have to. Well, you know something like they're there in that incident. They definitely were lacking discerning of the oh, spirit. They told the yeah. story the week before. Yeah, you yeah. know, because we, I think it's great move among the children. You yeah. Know. Well, children have brought revival lots of places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to be paying attention to the little ones. Yeah, so. well, they have the same size Holy Spirit. They sure do. <laughs> I think they're more sensitive, you know. They're just yeah. more sensitive. Well, David's had, in his miracle services with the children, he's had 80% success. That's more than most healing evangelists. Yeah. With the children. Right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Anyway, so I pray for, I'm not quite sure what to pray because... It's like an uh, enlightenment, isn't it? That God really can use anybody. Yeah. Uh, and it's like an openness. It's like returning to listening to the witness in your spirit. Isn't it? Like, right. instead of yeah. going by just what you see, I haven't seen that before. That looks odd. That looks strange. Stop that. And so you can quench out a move of God just by doing that. Just yeah. by... Uh, yeah, we we've got to be more sensitive to yeah. what the spirit is doing and not yeah. judge it. You know, yeah. you become the judge and then it quenches the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. The Lord forgive us for doing that and just let us be more mature and sensitive to you that we that we know what you are doing and we follow your lead, not asking you to follow us. Yeah. Oh, oh goodness. Well, um, I know we're going to have to wrap this up pretty soon, and we'll have to have you back to to complete. But I want to know when did? Oh gosh. Well, when did you start manifesting the the glory? Because I know you the always seer, have your your goal. The seer gift. You know? Well, right in the beginning, actually, but I didn't understand. Like I would feel things all over me. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm not in me. I'm not talking about something in me, okay, like a sickness or something. I just feel things on my different body parts. I didn't I know what was going on. And um, I finally began to realize, well, that's funny. I always get this little pain on my finger when that guy's around. So I figured <laughs> out it was something to do with the church or the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but I still, you know, I didn't know anyone like that. So I, I never said much until I met Mr. Bob Jones. <laughs> oh. Who totally understood everything I said yeah. and helped me with what meant what. Um, you know, I'd feel things on my shoulders. He'd say that's to do with the government of the church. You have to pray. And um you know, he always used to do apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Uh -huh. So when I'm sometimes when I'm praying for people, 
I can feel like they have a prophetic gift. They have a, I can feel it on my fingers. So right. Bob taught me about that. Otherwise, I probably would have checked into a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he kind of like rescued me in that area. And uh, what else did you want me to say? <laughs> oh, I was asking, okay, so when did you start manifesting that? Okay. Yes, yeah, so it was happening a, a, for quite a while since the beginning. I just didn't understand it, so I didn't. And then, because when I met Bob, then I began to put things together. He helped me. Now I have actually a book, a seer's list, and a teaching on the seer gift. And it tells you what different things mean when the Holy Spirit touches you. Yeah, like what is it? What? When I'm talking to someone, it feels like my elbow goes out of joint, you know. Yeah. So I know they're in the wrong place. What, what's the name of your book, Kathy? Um, is the book that goes with this, my seer set of CDs, but it's just what the different things mean. Okay, so it, Holy Spirit touches you. it's just called Seer's List. Seer's List. Okay, so if yeah. somebody wants to purchase that, then they could go to your website. Is that right? They can go to my website, but I don't encourage people to get it unless they listen to the teaching. Okay, Otherwise, so how, do how could they... How could they purchase the teaching and the book? Because well, I see they go hand in hand. So, oh uh, yeah, um, go to my website, which I'm sure will come on the screen, uh, which is uh, Kathy Walters Ministry dot com. Okay, and, and Kathy is K A T H I E. Yeah, Walters W A L T E R S Ministry dot com, and there's a store there. Okay, there's articles and you know stuff like that. Okay. Oh, I've got this book I bought with me. This is a book that... Ooh, that's pretty. A lot of this information from Bob. Uh-huh. It's called um, <laughs> The Spiritual Meaning of Aromas, Flowers, Trees, and Colors. Well, what that means you when you have visions, when you see them. Yeah. Bob helped me do that. I was at your house. Right. Yeah, yeah you know, those are... Those are really significant too. If you don't have yeah. them, those are tools that would be very helpful as you're um, maturing in this in the prophetic. I, and I had I had three questions on Facebook this morning already. What does this mean? I smelled this. I smelled melons. I smelled this, and I said, just get the book. Yeah, get the book. Get the book. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't always. We're not always accessible to just answer all the yeah. questions. But you know what, Kathy? I think. Um, I think we need to wrap this session up for right now, and then we'll come back and do part two. If if you're yes, ready. okay. I want to tell you. I want to tell you some of the things that have happened, which are very unusual. Well, say that. I'd like, to, but I'd like to encourage people to, you know, for God to do unusual things, because He wants He wants to manifest Himself in all different kinds of ways, but we're not watching. So we miss a lot of things. Right, right. That are the, the God things. Yeah. Okay. Well, stay tuned for more. Uh, Kathy's just got, she's just so, she's so full of it. But that it is the <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> she just has so much to share and we want to hear more. So we're going to come back and do a part two. So stay tuned for more. And remember, if you would like to be part of the Good News Express, we want to hear from you. Um, you know, go to our website, which is didyoulearntolove.org. And there's um, a little button on the right side, I believe. And it says Good News Express. And it will take you right to the application. And, um, and then you can fill that out and we'll get in touch with you. Okay, well, be blessed until next time. And don't forget, God has a testimony in your life. We want to hear from you. So be blessed until next time. We hope that today's testimony has both glorified God and implanted the seed of a new perspective of his love for you. If you are wondering, how can I get my testimony on board the Good News Express, Simply go to our website at didyoulearntolove.org and click on the link for the Good News Express. It will take you to the easy-to-fill-out application page. Once you're finished, submit.